Today I'm going to make the very strange and highly explosive chemical potassium tetraperoxochromate. I say strange because potassium tetraperoxochromate is one of only very few examples of chromium in the plus 5 oxidation state. It's also a very rare example of peroxide acting as a reducing agent, and an extremely rare example of a complex stabilized only by peroxide ligands. Needless to say, this compound isn't exactly what you would call stable, and I'll make sure to demonstrate the energetic properties later in the video. Anyway, to get started, I simply add 4.5 grams of potassium dichromate to a small beaker, along with 4.5 grams of potassium hydroxide, which is used in large excess to help favor the formation of products. This is then dissolved in a minimal volume of distilled water, preferably under 50 milliliters in this specific case. You'll notice that the potassium dichromate turns from orange to yellow as it dissolves, and this is because orange dichromate converts to yellow chromate in alkaline solution. Anyway, once this was completely dissolved, I poured my alkaline potassium chromate solution into a 50 milliliter centrifuge tube, which was then placed in an ice bath to cool to at least zero degrees Celsius. Along with this, I also placed a tube containing 50 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide in the ice bath to cool as well. After both of the solutions had cooled to at least freezing, I poured the alkaline chromate solution into a small beaker that I had placed inside of a larger beaker that was filled with ice water. This was done to keep the reaction mixture cold, as the reaction only happens near freezing while also being quite exothermic. Under very delicate stirring, I began to slowly add the cold solution of hydrogen peroxide dropwise, which eventually caused the solution to dramatically darken. Take care at this point that the reaction mixture here stays as cold as possible, as the peroxide may begin to spontaneously decompose above 15 degrees Celsius. Anyway, what's happening here is a two-step reaction that begins with one chromate ion reacting with four molecules of hydrogen peroxide, to form the intermediate tetraperoxochromate in the sixth oxidation state. This is a chromium compound stabilized by peroxide ligands, which again is not a terribly common thing in chemistry. This molecule, however, is incredibly unstable, and in alkaline solution, two molecules of the newly formed tetraperoxochromate 6 will react with another molecule of peroxide to form tetraperoxochromate 5, along with oxygen gas and water. This reaction is in essence a very basic oxidation reduction reaction wherein tetraperoxochromate is being reduced and hydrogen peroxide is being oxidized, which isn't something I get to say very often. The resulting compound is a trivalent anion bound to three potassium ions and is nearly insoluble in cold solution. That said, once my very slow addition of hydrogen peroxide is complete, I allow my reaction mixture to sit on ice for about 15 minutes to finish reacting, and then pour it through vacuum filtration. The potassium tetraperoxochromate here is an extremely dark maroon solid, and the individual crystals here are actually very reflective despite being very small. I go ahead and then give these a thorough rinse with some isopropyl alcohol until the filtrate runs completely clear, and then transfer them to a dish to allow them to dry overnight. As a side note, yes, you can use alcohol to dry tetraperoxochromate, unlike chromate, which will oxidize alcohol and be destroyed in the process. When I came back the next day, the crystals were bone dry, so I weighed them for a final mass of 8.73 grams, representing a 97.6% yield, assuming potassium dichromate as the limiting reagent. This is pretty good, and in general, these types of reactions tend to be very high yielding. Anyway, to begin my little demonstrations of the energetic properties of this compound, I first decided to ignite 50 milligrams of the tiny crystals to first get an idea of what to expect if I was to scale up. The second the flame came in contact with the potassium tetraperoxochromate, it kind of just burned and fizzled, leaving behind a yellow residue of what is almost certainly highly toxic hexavalent chromium. As the compound didn't seem all that energetic, I decided next to scale up to 500 milligrams, which resulted in a much more aggressive reaction that resembles black powder more than anything else. This second reaction was also vigorous enough that it was able to eject a fine dust of hexavalent chromium, 
And so it's at this point that I will recommend nobody try this under any circumstances as the danger almost certainly outweighs the visuals of this quite unremarkable reaction. Since I felt at this point I was in too deep anyway, I decided to ignite a third sample of two grams, which sent a plume of the evil yellow dust in every direction. This little project required me to douse my entire fume hood, the ducting, and the filters in a strong reducing solution, but in the end, I guess it was fun. Weirdly enough, this is probably the most dangerous energetic compound I've ever made, despite it being on its own one of the least energetic. By the way, here's what it looks like when the resulting yellow powder is treated with a strongly reducing cleaner. You'll notice the hexavalent chromium becomes a deep emerald green, which is a far safer form of chromium and can be disposed of fairly conventionally. Now, one way this reaction can be made far more spectacular is by using potassium tetraperoxochromate as the oxidizer in a simple binary powder. To this end, I first weigh out about 50 milligrams of the compound, followed by an additional 15 to 20 milligrams of red phosphorus, which will act as my fuel. This particular mixture is terrifyingly reactive, far more so than the simple pyrotechnics I made from sulfur and bromate a few weeks ago. To prevent a spontaneous and potentially extremely dangerous reaction, it's important not to mix these with anything glass or metal, and I opted for a simple cotton swab. Once I felt the two chemicals were thoroughly mixed, I very carefully scooped up a tiny quantity of around 5 to 10 milligrams and held it over a Bunsen burner, which resulted in a very loud crack with an echoing report. I didn't do this reaction many times as the intensity frightened me, but here's some footage I was able to get. As you can see, even at such a tiny scale, this reaction was fairly intense, and I strongly advise against trying to scale this up whatsoever. Aluminum can also be used as a fuel source instead of phosphorus, which resulted in a bright and sustained light in place of the sharp report, which I found pretty neat as well. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, or at least found it interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.